Hi, hi, Chris Martin. No, the uh, the reason I, I it was my personal choice to join a synagogue. A, uh, it happened to be a, I didn't know the difference between anything in Judaism. I didn't know anything about Judaism at all, except for I was forced to read the, the King James Bible until I turned blue in the face, and my mother punished me on top of it. Anyways, um, so when I came to the the Bible, as the Jews have it, up to Malachi, you know, up to Genesis to Malachi, Malachi, or and Breshit, uh, and with a completely different spin on everything, um, that blew me away, of course. But I, I joined a... Uh, a reform synagogue at Waterford, Connecticut. You can call Sherry Barnes. You can call up Rabbi uh, retired uh, Aaron Rosenberg and ask him if, if I'm telling the truth. I did give two thousand dollars to the Sh- Solomon Schechter Academy, and and uh, 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 Rabbi uh, Rabbi Astor, who's now in New Haven, didn't respond to my qu- request for a little letter saying, "Oh, we're so you know, you're such a nice boy." Actually, that was a lot of money for me when I at that time, and it's, it's still a lot of money, but. Um, who cares? Too late. It's over, over. It's over. But I thought, and I knew Karen ba- vaguely. Karen Rosenberg. I got their birth uh, marriage certificate from uh, Indianapolis, where my father grew up a good chunk of his life. So that was pretty neat. Stein. Uh, what was her? I have to look. I can, I'll look her up and post her online right now while I'm thinking about her. Uh, that is uh, Aaron Rosenberg's wife, Karen. Uh, Karen. Some other name I forget what it was. I forgot Karen's name. Anyway, she was like the director of uh, the Solomon Schechter Academy for a time there. Um, and what was it saying? So my connection to Judaism is just because of that. Now Aaron had us had me going. I bought a book, you know, Introduction to Judaism. So I got to meet uh, Aster. I got to meet uh, the, the the Chabad uh, rabbi there, and I forgot who he was. Lecture upon lecture upon lecture, uh, evening lectures basically. And I really, really enjoyed it. I got a big deal out of it. Uh, at the end, uh, there was no pressure to convert to anything. It was for me. It was an ex- uh, an exposure I never would have gotten, and learning I never would have learned. Uh, education in, from multiple, you know, from uh, three people at least um, on th- what is important. Uh, how, you know, how, what's the evolution of Jewish thought? Who were the Karaites? You know, how did they come about? Uh, uh, what the place of Jesus himself was in the Jewish tradition, uh, in a, in a negative and a positive way. You know, what what, what were the positive things that Jesus had uh, that maybe any rabbi would say was very good, and what was the negative things that Jesus did or had or thought that may not be so good for others. You know, but that's a that's a, the concept of of uh, tov and hara for. What is the Jewish concept of uh, of tov and hara, the good and the bad? You know, so uh, I didn't understand the the halacha, and so I, I have that in my head. Not that I'm a, an obedient Jewish acolyte. I am not. I am a non-Jew. I'm a not. I'm not a Noahide because I'm not a follower. I'm a I'm a non I'm a non-believer. But nevertheless, I have all the education in my head now, and I appreciate I appreciate Judaism for those people who who enjoy it and and uh, follow through with it. That's not an evil thing for me. It's just it's something I don't want forced down my gullet. You know, it's, it's uh, for me as long as you have freedom of religion and freedom from everybody else's religion. Because in order to have freedom of religion, you have to have the freedom of not having everybody else's religion on top of you. And that's a, a very important part of the Grand Orient of France's position. Uh, in order to have freedom, you have to have separation of church and state, or synagogue and state, or creed and state, and belief and state. Otherwise, you're just creating new. Uh, religions upon religions, the, the religion of reason, with, with they, the French started for a while until they realized that enough of them realized that uh, religion of reason is still a religion. So you can't, you, you got to separate even that from the state. You can have pomp and ceremony. That's one thing. You can have music attended to a to a you know. You can have Lafayette. I can celebrate Lafayette's birthday. And by the way, today is Lafayette's birthday. Happy Lafayette's birthday. Why is uh, why is Lafayette an important man to me? I didn't know Lafayette until recently. I mean, I had no idea what all the things that went through that young man's brain and that he left behind uh, for us as a, as a legacy. You know, as a as a intellectual and emotional legacy. It's beautiful stuff he wrote. You know, that doesn't mean he was a perfect guy. That he was a glory. That he was a, a, a perfect. No, it just means that his thoughts very much uh, make me purr. Uh, all right, Chris. Happy Saint uh, Saint Lafayette Day. <laughs>
<laughs> Apparently, he was some kind of Catholic guy, but, and I have no problem uh, for against Roman Catholics. I just as long as Roman Catholics don't tell me that I'm sterile, just because I'm an atheist, like uh, Bishop Tobin up there in Providence, who was probably maybe in a bad mood that morning. Maybe he just wanted to pick on somebody instead of picking on the, on the local gay population. He picked on atheists that morning, you know. <laughs> who knows what kind of uh, you know gay porn he watches on the side, you know. Meanwhile, you know. Uh, Chopping everybody down to no, to no thing. I don't know what Tobin does. I, it's not my place to evaluate his life, anyways. His life is no less valuable than mine is. Valuable than mine is for sure. At the end of our lives, we all, we all thought. What was this old thing about? Ring around the rosies, pocket full of posies. Ashes, ashes, we all fall down. And that is a very, very painful truth. And I hate that thought. There's no. Oh, I'm getting back into philosophy. Not philosophy, bullshit. Uh, so, go do some uh, Lafayette bullshit today. I'll look him up. What was I going to do? I was, gonna, I was intending to do something other than I've completely, completely forgot my mind. All right, Chris Martin. Uh, I forgot your birthday is what? You were born in 77. I forgot your birthday. I don't keep these things. Uh, Nicola is what, 90 something? I had her information. I can look it up uh, since I'm connected to. I'll look it up. I'll look that up. If I don't forget, I'm going to stop this video. I'm going to look it up right now before I forget. Your birthday and Nicola's birthday. I guess I can put that together somehow, somewhere. I think I already did. I should just put you on my webpage, huh? I should just put you on my webpage and just leave, let it run without any without any end. I'll just leave. Hey, you mind if I do that, Chris? If I just put you on my my Sunday blog page, not having it. I just I'll just leave it open connection. I'll, I'll stop it up. Read about Agnes Brock and Thomas Martin. Leave it at that. And if uh, if that Caleb Martin, ah, I'll go to Caleb and leave it at that. <laughs> Every time I push beyond Theobald the old, I get nervous. It's like, there's too many comments that are out there. That, no, we don't really know about this. Is it true? And yet, there's so many people that say they're confirming it over and over again that yes, Theobald the old is the son of you know of uh, Eudes. The, the, what, the grandson of Eudes, the uh, Count of, of Orleans. I mean, it all makes sense to me, but I don't know. I don't know. All right, Chris. Boker man. Have a good one.